more innovation in smart glasses from Vuzix. That's our text to nation. I'm Fred Fishkin. We are happy to welcome back Paul Travers, CEO and founder. Hi, Paul. Hey, Fred. Super, super happy to be here. Great to see you again. And you are debuting at CES, a, a new platform for smart glasses. There's some new stuff coming along. Give us the overview. Yeah, that's correct. In fact, um, we have a, a new product called Ultralight, and it's the basis. First of all, we started an OEM group at Vuzix at the beginning of this year. So 2022, it debuted. And that group supplies to third party customers, waveguides and display engines. And, you know, we make really cool smart glasses. Some of my buddies behind me here are wearing some of them. <laughs> and one of the things that we've always strived to do is make super lightweight, trim and slim, and we're pushing towards fashion forward. And the newest device, the ultralight platform, is one of our latest and greatest incarnations of that. And they fit literally, this is a conventional eyeglass case, right? And you can see they just fit in like a normal pair of regular glasses. And what's cool about them is they have built-in displays and optics engines in the top corners here. They're about as small as any that have ever been built on the planet, quite frankly. And they'll be able to come in multiple kinds, like shades and stuff. So for sunglasses and, and the likes, and they have a Bluetooth connection and battery that ties the glasses to the phone. So text messages, but basically any kind of messaging that comes up on your phone can now come up in the glasses. So when you're skiing on the hill, <clears throat> they want to know where you are on the hill. The information can come up in the glasses without having to take your phone out of your pocket. A text message comes in. Hey, let's meet down at the bar. You don't have to take your phone out of your pocket. Uh, you're walking down the street in New York City, same kind of a thing. I could be maybe watching a, a movie that was in, in Korean and I have my glasses on and I'm seeing the subtitles in English. Or if I'm hearing impaired, by way of example, I can have my phone out. It can be listening and I can read what the person is saying in front of me. So it has 101 use cases and they're as fashion forward as they get. They look exactly like a conventional pair of glasses and again like i said you can i didn't say this but let's say it now <laughs> you can get them with your prescription so they become your regular glasses um and again it's a very very simple connection to the phone they'll last for two days on a charge so constantly being used pushing text up to the glasses two days later it's still working so longer than many smart watches today even frankly mind you it's just a beautiful little display it allows you to have hands-free access to your phone it works with your headphones. It is monochrome green just yet, but we'll be making full color versions of these in the coming year or two. Very, very cool. Now, this is looks like it's going to be opening up some new markets for you because you've played pretty much, I guess, in uh, in the enterprise space, the business space, and, and things like that primarily, even military, right? Yes, and in fact, the products that we make today are all focused in that, that space. This is a design that really is pointed at the broader markets. Uh, at first, Vuzix's goal is not to bring this to market ourselves, though. We have a lot of third party partners that want a white label, put their brand on it and or buy the parts so they can put them into their own products. So, yes, this is the beginnings of Vuzix moving into the broader markets, but moving into the broader markets with partners at the same time. Very interesting. Now, tell us, is there a, a camera built into this as, as well? I mean, contrast this with what Google had tried to do some years back. Yes. This is designed as an information display. It's not designed to take pictures and the likes. There's plenty of other products that do that. And you might imagine some of those products that just have cameras in them today being upgraded with a display so that it has cameras, displays, and the whole bit. This guy is designed literally as a platform, more so than a finished device. Although I will tell you, in the enterprise space alone, using these for hands-free picking and the likes will be phenomenal, especially for use with uh, finger scanners and those kinds of things. So this platform is really quite simple. It's got a battery that's this big. You can see it's quite small here. <laughs> And the electronics package with display engine and everything is literally just this small. And then the waveguides, of course, they're the lenses. So 
they look exactly like a regular pair of glasses because of that. So there's very little to this, but it gives you amazing capabilities. Hands-free, phone in your pocket. It's a big step towards what people would actually wear. Different than the Google Glass, which had a full CPU. Um, it had a camera in the front. The camera actually, to some people think of it, especially in the consumer space as a detriment because of privacy and those kinds of things. That said, I think that guys like Meta are proving that the camera aspect of this is, is not going to be a detriment in the long run, although it is under, uh, what's the brand? It's not Oakley, it's Meta's, Meta's newest product, Fred. Um, are they, are you, is there something other than Oculus? Uh... Yeah, no, Meta, Meta came out, it actually wasn't under their brand, it was under Ray-Bans. Okay. They have a pair, and Ray Band is the one that has, is the is the the brand that they are sold under, and they have cameras a camera on it. They're designed to take pictures and share, and I can't remember what they call this thing, but in any event, it it it's, seems to be doing quite well out there today. It's a very conventional pair of glasses that's designed for audio and with a camera. What's missing is a display. So you could imagine a device like that wanting to upgrade with this kind of a display inside of it as it steps more and more towards the smart glasses of the future. There's two ways of looking at this. One is I'm gonna do the all in HoloLens magic leap kind of device, or I'm gonna go from the other side and bring the technology up in a simpler fashion to start with, but give people capabilities for hands-free and the likes. And Vuzix takes the latter approach. Lightweight, all day wearable. It's why it's being successful in enterprise. And a pair of glasses that look like this, that look like a conventional pair of of sunglasses that have similar price points, maybe just slightly more to a regular pair of sunglasses, we believe starts to open up the marketplace in a big way for smart wearable glasses. Oh, I saw the size of that battery, Paul. How are you getting two days out of that? <laughs> There's some magic going on. And that's because these electronics are miserly little guys. And the display itself, we're only turning the pixels on that you need to to put the text up. So you don't have like a front lit display that's on a lot of like hollow lenses and the likes of a hollow lens is a, is a mem scanner. Um, in the case of this display, pixel on, that's it. If you got an arrow to the right and it's 50 pixels, there's only 50 out of, you know, 500,000 pixels that are turned on. A, a DLP or an LCOS display that's front lit, they have to light that whole thing up. So they got an LED that's red and an LED that's blue and one that's green and they turn them on like a flashlight. And then what the display does is it throws away the light that it's not using. Well, unfortunately, that means the bulk of the information is just going to heat and lost light inside the system. Whereas this guy, again, these micro LEDs, which Fusix is a big believer on in, in the future of the AR space because of stuff just like this. When you can put a pair of glasses on and two days later, you're still getting messages and stuff from your phone. The phone's gonna run out of juice before the glasses does. So it's an amazing step forward, we believe in the in the wearability and the use cases associated with these kinds of smart glasses. I mean, the hearing impaired world alone, I think is gonna love these, these devices. You have the glasses on and you can see what people are saying, right? It's a huge step forward for folks like that. And as you mentioned, language translation as well. What uh, do you think these might cost? You're, you're working with other partners to bring them to market, but yeah, those, no doubt, they'll be sub five hundred bucks. This is not in the thousands of dollars kind of thing. It's not even over a grand. This is more sub five hundred. So you've been such a real pioneer here in this space. What are your thoughts about uh, how? broadly this technology is going to go mainstream i mean before it's all said and done fred when the technology gets sexy enough to be all in with spatial computing it's going to replace the phone i believe it's the next platform for computing between now and then there are so many low-hanging fruit applications that just need the basic display that just need the display and possibly a camera with it at the same time and you know if you look at our enterprise business it's just starting to blossom and it's these glasses will be everywhere in that space. I don't think there's an hour of the day that goes by where we're not being used in some hospital someplace today. Two years ago, that would have been unheard of. So, I mean, it's it's all getting started. The stuff is in the early days. I mean, if you look at our beautiful models back here, they're you know, they're, it's not stuff that you wear every day of the week, that's for sure. But 
at work, when you can pick 20% faster and more accurate, when you're able to do operations on the fly and get help. Uh, there's just so many places where it makes sense. And when you can finally put on a pair that look like a conventional pair of sunglasses, I mean, it, this is game changing stuff. And you have the display there, whether you're in a restaurant and a waiter or waitress is wearing them and can tell you, just read <laughs> read in front of them what the specials are today and exactly. or answer any other question. Yep, yep, exactly. What about uh, the education market for this? Are there applications there? Uh, I mean, besides kids having Google in front of them while they're taking a test? <laughs> Well, I mean, I think there are when you, especially when it becomes more spatial compute oriented. So I open up the book and the book comes to life and I can actually see how uh, thermodynamics work in front of me as the experiment unfolds, like it's really there, even though it's not. Uh, there's nothing like the hands on approach of seeing things and interacting with them. And that's what's going to happen in the long run. The virtual reality can do that today, but you're not involved in the real world. You know, when you can pick up the beaker because it's got an arrow pointed to it saying, you know, we need five drops put in this beaker kinds of things, those kind of interactive sort of things that associate the real world to what the person is doing and the digital world that's helping them learn how to do it. That's going to be game changing stuff. But again, it requires a bit more than just an information display. Today, an information display can be incredibly handy just just for facts and information and the likes. Tell me about the, the world of medicine and uh, what this can do there. Yes. Well, today there's a, a few areas in physical surgery itself, um, knee surgery, shoulder surgery. They're using our glasses. In one case, it's the display so they can see how the equipment is aligned up on the person's knee until it's just right. And when it's aligned right, boom, they can put the pins in for the knee surgery, let's say. In that case, they're instrumenting the knee with some very complex equipment and somehow the doctor while he's turning these knobs needs to know where it's set. Another case, again, they're instrumenting the knee, but in this case, there's markers on the equipment that they're putting on the knee and the glasses are measuring where those markers are in space. And when they're aligned appropriately, as the glasses are looking and measuring, then they do a cross check and then put the, the screws in the person's knee. So. Physically, they are part of the operation. They're being used as an integral part of making of doing those operations. And it's all kinds of shoulders and knee surgery, sh shoulder surgery kinds of applications. Um, another good one is for teaching in the hospital. You have a doctor and he's trying to do a new operation. Doctors Without Borders would send another doctor who's an expert down to South Africa to help with this. They don't have to do that now. They just send the glasses. The doctor's got the glasses on. He's doing the operation. The glasses are looking at the operation. And the expert who's sitting in San Francisco with a, a mouse or a touch screen, and he's drawing on the screen, and the doctor's seeing through the eyepiece of the M400 in this case, he is seeing exactly what he should be doing next, like excise this tissue first, not that tissue, you know, that sort of thing. So that's remote support for a doctor. Maybe it's a med tech. And the med tech is helping the doctor pick the right stint or whatever it might be. Uh, the other use case similar is the doctor's an expert and he's teaching open heart surgery by way of example. He's got the glasses on and he's got the bird's eye view of that open heart surgery. And while he's doing the surgery, he's streaming, you know, broadcast quality video off the glasses and 500 people could be sitting Doctors, nurses, people learning this operation could be sitting anywhere around the world and watching this operation happen live. So it's great for those kinds of things. At the same time, we, we work with companies like Proximy, uh, Rods and Cones, uh, Pixie Medical, Medacta. These companies are all doing similar kinds of things where literally it's revolutionizing the way the operating theater works. In the consumer space, um, one has to assume that uh, Apple will be joining the the fray here and and others as well. Uh, Microsoft, perhaps in a bigger way, uh, maybe Google again. What yeah. What are your thoughts? I 100% agree. I, I think there's a lot of caution because everybody wants to get this right. If you come out with a 
another nosedive. It's, <laughs> doesn't, it doesn't help, but the reality of it is, Fred, you, you've got to innovate. You, you've got to push the technology forward until finally it's right for the broader markets. Uh, Google, I give them a lot of credit for attempting Google Glass. That was the very first shot at a consumer-oriented pair of smart glasses. And granted, lots of lots of things weren't quite right about it for that space, uh, but they learned a lot and they opened up the enterprise side of the business. I, I, HoloLens is an amazing piece of kit. It does spatial computing incredibly well, but it's it's too big, it's too bulky, it's too expensive for the broader markets. And quite frankly, people are learning a lot with it today about what needs to be done next to get the next one right. And I, I think the guys over at Meta, it's very similar. Their Oculus Quest, the Quest 2, these were, I think, some of the best incarnations of VR headsets that have ever been in the marketplace. Um, the newest incarnation is a, is a push forward more, but it was more expensive. So, you know, these things, they, I, you know, they just got to keep going. And sooner or later, the folks are going to get it right. The keys to that, though, are fashion forward. I mean, if you if it hurts to wear it, if, if you look stupid, people just aren't going to use it. And especially in the broad markets, if, if you look like you just stepped off the Starship Enterprise, it's not going to happen. So that's why Vuzix is taking these lightweight approach with things like our ultralight here that look just like a pair of glasses you would normally wear. This is a great way to get your feet wet and get into the game and make solutions for people that solve problems, not just this futuristic someday spatial computing thing. Very exciting. For more information, the site is vuzix.com, V-U-Z-I-X.com. Paul Travers, congratulations on continuing the innovation and thanks for taking time with us. Yeah, thanks, Fred. It's my pleasure. <laughs>